Okay. Hi guys, welcome to Conversations with Dr. April. I am your host. So today we're gonna do the quarantine edition of relationships and roles that we play as men and women. So I want you guys to introduce yourselves. Hello everyone, I'm Tay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lori, better known as Peaches. So if April uh, first to Miss Peaches, she's talking about Lori. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Mercedes Brown. I'm Hilton Young. Hello, everyone. I'm Eli. You can just call me Eli. Not flipped. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Adrian. Hi everyone, I'm Adrian. I go by Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm Twenice. And some people may call me Nisi. It's fine. Okay. Nisi. <laughs> All righty, so let's jump in. Y'all know we've been trying to have this discussion for a long time. So now we live. Okay. So my first question is, do you believe that you should tell someone that you are dating everything you are looking for in a person? Why or why not? Anybody? Uh, this is Lori. Last week, whenever we asked that question, I just kind of briefly stated that I don't think that we should ask, I'm sorry, that we should reveal everything that we're actually looking into. Um, I mean, that we would like to gain from a relationship or from that mate. Um, and that's just because you want to, um, I guess, get to know somebody and you want them to be genuine you don't want to just give them everything and tell them everything that you want out of a person and then they may in turn you know um just show you what you're looking for just to get you and then once you guys do form or uh get into a relationship some of those things you know they'll uh start fading away and so it's just not genuine but there are some things that you should um you know, revealing the relationships. And I think we also talked to kind of about like some of the deal breakers. Yes, that would be something that you would want to actually reveal. So they'll know that like from the get go, this is what I'm going to put up put up, and this is what I'm not. Okay. Anybody else want to chime in? Okay, since you're on the screen, <laughs> what's, what's your response? You agree with Lori? Yeah, I agree. I, I totally agree. Sometimes you can't tell everything. You got to kind of see where they at, see where a person is. Then, but I don't think you should wait too long because you don't want to get dig too far in and then that person ain't the person that you want to be in. I mean, be with. Yeah, excuse me. I got a few things going on. But um, yeah, I agree totally. Okay. Hilton? Yeah, I don't know if you can tell everything that you want in the first meeting anyway, uh, but I think that you should tell all that you want as soon as possible, because if the person is fake, they're going to be fake either way it go, whether it be in the beginning, whether it be in the end, eventually you're going to find out who they are anyway. Also, you're going to be able to tell whether or not they can live up to those expectations that you want. I mean, let's say if you want an educated man, well... Uh, it, it, easily you're going to find out whether they're educated or not at some point you're going to find out whether they're educated or not so I think that you should not waste each other's time and say what you want up front because if the person don't have it if they're honest enough then they can you know say it from the get up but I don't have this this and this and you can stop wasting each other's time and move on to somebody that actually has what you're looking for okay, I agree Myron what you think? Um, well, I agree because I believe both parties just gonna have a guard up anyway in the beginning. Hmm. Okay. 
Mercedes, what's your response? Um, to Hilton, when he said if they're honest enough to give that information, but a lot of times they are not honest in that information. And I know he said in the long run, you'll figure it out, oh, this is not the person. But because at that point, I have invested these feelings and this time. And so it just makes it a little bit more difficult to leave a, a bad situation that makes it more, you know, leave something that you thought you wanted. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, honesty is something that you can only hope and wish for in a person that you meet. Um, but I mean, honesty is hard to detect to a person who's being fake. And so if, if you, if you're being real from the giddy up and, and not wasting each other's time, then, you know, it'll be good on both parts, but it's up to the individual to determine whether or not they're going to be honest or not in the beginning or in the, in the long run. I mean, you just don't know how to, it's sometimes just hard to detect that and it's hard to discern. And so you have to look for inconsistencies along the way before you allow yourself to fall deep into the relationship or invest feelings into it. Sometimes you have to be on observation and not be so quick to drop your guards in situations like that. But honesty is hard to detect, especially with someone who is smart, is intelligent, and know how to use their words well. Yes, manipulators. Yeah. I mean, we all have some manipulative tendencies in us because we're flawed humans, but some of them, some people are masters at it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Adrian, any feedback? I agree. Um, everybody does have manipulative characteristics within. I mean, if you just out here just date people just because, you know, it's something fun to do. You know, you're going to give out what you want to give out, even if it's something minimum like, oh, I don't like smoking. And then, you know, you just kind of leave it at that. But if it's somebody that you want them to know everything about you, like, hey, I'm allergic to such and such. And then, you know, you'll get, you'll get that type of receptive feedback back. OK. Nisi. So when you talked about the manipulation, like those that, you know, that are masters at it. And when you tell them all your likes and dislikes, they may use it, you know, to take advantage of you. So you got to be very mindful when you're dealing with that person. You know, when you're dating someone and you want, you know, you want them to know your likes and dislikes, but then you have to be mindful, like, what is this person's intentions? Like, right. will they use it against me? You know, you know, do they really want to truly get to know me and live up to my expectations? Or, you know, so I guess, it's a yes and a no for me. Okay. Yeah, you're taking a chance either way it go. I mean, I mean whether you whether you tell all that what you want in the beginning or you tell all that what you want eventually as it go down the line, mm -hmm. you're still taking a chance. I mean, it's it's just de it depends on the person's personality and how they soak things in. All right, you could tell them everything in the beginning. And they'll try their best. You know, somebody mentioned they'll try their best to live up to all the expectations. But eventually, if that's not who the person is, eventually that's going to come through. But if you wait to tell them, then there's an acceptance about that person that you have developed over a period of time. And then along, you know, a down, along down the line, you tell them what you want. And they may not they may have a problem with this because now they, they may think that, well, you're not accepting me for who I am. Why you wait all this time to tell me that you want this, 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 and this? Why you didn't tell me that from the giddy up? Because now I've become who I am and I'm comfortable in this relationship and now you want all these different things. You know, it, I mean, e either way, there's some, some consequences. There's some repercussions for waiting or telling people in the beginning. So, I mean, I guess you have to pick your poison on that. But what if you make a good point, Hilton? So what if you have laid out some things that you wanted in the beginning and the person has, you know, in the beginning done everything that, you know, they said they was going to do and that you like, then somewhere along in the relationship, it changed. So that's what we talk about being consistent. Yeah. 
Yeah, but that's the chance you have to take. I mean, there's a there's a level of vulnerability that has to take place when you get into a relationship. At some point, you're going to have to exhibit some level of trust, especially if you're interested in that person. So, you like I said, you're taking the chance either way it go. I mean, there could be some conflict later on down the line when you begin to tell all that you want, even though you even though you were minimal in your description of what you wanted in the beginning. If you reveal all later on down the line, there still be be some conflict there because the person may feel like they're not being accepted for who they are. That's true. That's true. So if you that's what I'm saying in the beginning, I, I mean, I don't think I don't think you can tell anything. I, I don't think you can tell all that what you want in the beginning on the first day. But I think that you should get all the information that you can in as as times progress in the beginning so that people could people have a full understanding of what's expected of them you know what i'm saying like i said it could be conflict either way it go i'd rather get it out of the way in the beginning and then find out what's going on down the line with that person and and the problem with that i think as mercedes uh uh mentioned is that your feelings could be invested in and you could get hurt like that too so i mean i guess you just got to pick your poison and see which one works best for you at this point i mean that that there could be consequences on either side of the spectrum Okay, so let's let's change focus for a little bit. Let's talk about what's the what are the roles that's perceived for a, a single couple relationship and a married couple relationship. How do you guys feel the communication should be in the relationship? When you're single versus when you're married. We have married people here. We have single people here. So let's discuss each interpretation of both. Wait, April, clarify the question. So you're asking about right, right, yeah. communication? Yes, communication, I'm sorry. So I'm asking about the communication in your relationship when you're single and when you're married. So for the single people, how do you communicate with your partner or what are some of the things that your expectations or when you communicate with your partner? And then for the married people, is it easier for you to communicate with your partner? What are the expectations there? What are their roles? What do you feel like this person's role should be in your relationship? Single versus married. Am I confusing y'all? <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah, I'm just I'm 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 not really sure, but as far as I, I feel like the communication part maybe should kind of be what and what because I mean at the same time whenever you I guess get into a relationship most times you're looking into uh, I guess get to know this person and communicate with them on a level that in hopes one day that you will be married so I guess even in the beginning stages kind of the relationship you should be um, steadily increasing your communication with them so it can grow. So I'm not really sure how to answer that question. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Well, well I think from, from the perspective of what you speak, I think in a relationship, I think there should be clear communication about what direction the relationship is going in. Uh, because a lot of a lot of people step into a relationship and uh, don't have clear uh, information about where the, the relationship is going. You know, one person may just want a casual relationship. One person may want a committed relationship. And, it's, right. and, and communication is so interpretive. One person... Uh, aspect of committed a committed relationship may be different from the other person's aspect of, of, of a committed relationship. So I think that both perspectives should be brought to the table so each person can have an understanding of which direction they're going in as far as a committed or a casual relationship is concerned. And both need to put out their perspectives and their definitions of what they feel it is. So so it won't be a mix up or a breakdown in communication. As far as married people are concerned, I think the expectation of what's the role of the husband, what's the role of the, of the wife, what are the needs of the husband, what are the needs of the wife as far as uh, communication is concerned, finances is concerned, raising the children is concerned. Because if you have children, you, if you have different upbringings, one may like to do some butt whippings and one may not like it. And so I think communication for married couples is all, all it's a new it's a new set of roles that has to take place once you become husband and wife and it's a new kind of communication 
So I think that communication is different, but but it's necessary on both parts for the re- for the relationship. You got to see what direction you're going in for married people. You got to see you got to communicate and see how uh, both of you are going to live and coexist and cohabitate and all the other stuff. So I think communication from that perspective is pertinent. Okay. So we asked this question. Last week, and we got you know yes and no. So, do you believe being consistent in a relationship is important, and why? Who? Say that again. Do you believe being consistent? Do you believe being consistent in a relationship is important, and why? Um. Anybody? Tavian, go ahead. Oh, I didn't have that out. I believe being consistent is important. Um, they say the same thing you did to get the one we got to do uh, continue to keep on. <laughs> so, <laughs> consistency is very important. <laughs> um, at, at least with me, it is. Um, okay. And everybody's different. So, Eli, what you think? <laughs> I mean, of course, consistency is important. I mean, you don't want the person to switch up on you. You know, you thought you knew this person, but then all of a sudden they changed to this other person. And, you know, so, yeah, consistency is important in in different aspects of consistency. Yeah, like with life and bills and, you know, um, the way we treat each other and, you know, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Like being consistent, like um, as far as the dependability and trust, you know, but I guess but being also um, being able to change up things in the relationship to keep it alive. Okay. Okay. Last week, mine was yes and no. Uh, last week, it was yes and no. Yeah, you want to be consistent on a lot of things, but you also have to um have the space to want to improve and want to you know always be better than what you was with the things like um like you said you know what you got to uh to get her you got to keep her you know you got to do the same things to keep her i believe in that too in in some ways as well but like i said if you consistently doing the same thing over and over you, you don't want it to be redundant you don't want it to be just repetitive like that you know sometimes you know you got to switch it up every now and then but you do have to be consistent on certain levels right and on that part while i was saying consistent as far as being whatever you need to get it you got to keep it the switching up part is consistency with me is like consistently always being that romantic, always being that guy who listens, being uh, always being that guy who she can count on. I might switch up what I may do this time for her. Mm-hmm. You know, as far as if I'm giving her a gift or if I'm uh, wanting to do something special for her. But being consistent as far as I'm always going to come through. I'm always going to be that romantic. I'm always going to be that guy who's going to listen to you and protect you and take you. All right. All right. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> so, which brings me, I guess, to my next question. Now, why do women feel they have to tell men what to do? Oh we talked God. about this last time as ladies. Oh and why do y'all feel that way? I guess it that's, like that's sometimes, <laughs> what. Let me say this. It seems like sometimes women believe that we become total. And I hate to say this in a harsh way because I don't want to sound so bad. <laughs> but it seems like we become dummies or, or we don't we, we, we just don't know how to live once we get a woman. We don't it's like y'all believe that we just become straight idiots. <laughs> we, can't <laughs> <our> head, <laughs> we can't do the right move, we can't make no concrete decisions, we can't do none of that unless that's the approval that, from a woman. That's probably because we you're not doing it the way we want you to do it. So that's well, how I guess that's what it is. That's how I was like, okay, so the control factor is there. <laughs> Might be. <laughs> we we got to work on ourselves as well, you know. <laughs> but why do you guys look at it as a control? It may not it be may not. a control. It just, she just wants, you know, something 
done that she may have okay, stated right. to you over and over yeah. again and you still ha haven't done it so it's like if i'm telling you what i like and i'm telling you what i would like for you to do and you see that it's an issue for me and if you haven't done it yet and then i keep i say it again and then i say it again it's like i, I keep have to tell you this and you still well, it, do. It, that might be well that's different, different. Mm -hmm. yeah. well that's different though that's different because if we do it, the, because if we do it and we do it the wrong way, then it's still a problem. So it's not the again and right. again and again thing. It's how we do it that it appears to be the problem. And if we don't do it right or do it in the in the in the way that you would right. like it to be done, right. then that becomes the control issue. Not the again and again and again thing. I understand the again and again and again thing. I don't think that's control at all. But we, right. but when we don't do it exactly like y'all want us to do it, then that's the control thing. That's that's what makes right. us feel like dummy or feel like we're not doing it right. And because women and men communicate so differently, you know, we commute, we think like pilots. Y'all think like tour guides. And so if we if, if we miss a particular detail in what you want us to do, then you want to come behind us and do it because we ain't doing it right. 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 We did it. We did it. We did it. We just did it our way. So, like, if yeah. you want, if, if you want us to do something for you, let us do it. Or if you don't like the way it's being done, do it yourself. <laughs> so, so we can't we can't tell you how we want it done. We should leave that up to you all to, I guess, perform okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. Tell us. Tell us how it's. Tell us how you want it to be done. But don't just okay. tell us to go do it. Right. And then oh, we go okay. do it, and then you come back around and say, "Oh, I don't like the way it's being done." Oh, yeah. It, 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 so we, we should communicate give, this because we give more instruction, I guess, huh? Well, yeah, because we don't think like y'all. Right. That's we don't, right. Y'all, right. y'all think like tour guides. You want to explore every little detail before you get to the destination. We think right. like pilots. We just gonna go and do it. We gonna get to the destination. That's done. But if there's information that we're lacking. That 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 that's needed to get it done like you want it to be done. Then you need to let us know that. But don't just tell us to go do something. And then we go do it. Then you got a problem with the way we do it, and then say we ain't do it right because it make it seem like we're incompetent and we're mm -hmm. less than to get the job done. No, no, right. I got the job done. Look, look, it's right there. Look. Okay, oh no, so but you ain't do it this way, and you ain't do it that way, and you ain't this way and that way. Okay, well you know what, you go ahead and do it. Okay, that's fine. Give us an example. Hold on, Hilton. Let Mercedes give us a better example. No, I was I was about to ask y'all about like give me a specific example because I feel like men will feel incompetent because I know I tell you exactly how to do stuff. When I ask you, I will tell you exactly how it be done if you make it. And you don't feel like I can do it by myself. Why do I have to do it that way? So they kind of feel incompetent on the jump, or they feel some type of way for me telling them how something is done. So, okay. um, I mean, can y'all can y'all give me an example of something that you would say um, you didn't give me oh, instructions and I did it myself? Give me an perfect, example. Perfect example. Hey, hey, Tay, go in there and pack up them papers out there that the drawing there that we've been trying to clean out for the last month. Go in and get all that paper stuff out there. The bag. I mean, I said draw in there. I go and get a bag, take all the papers out, clean out the drawer, put them in the bag. Then you come behind me and say, hey, you didn't separate the papers that says yours from mine. You didn't separate the bit. You didn't tell me to separate nothing. You told me to clean out the drawer. Now, if I'm not, if you want me to run through them paper by paper and figure out <laughs> what goes where and all that, you need to tell me that. But other than that, I'm going to go clean out and, and get go ahead and say, baby, look, I cleaned the drawer out. Now we look at it as okay. Common sense tells you you need to separate them. That ain't common sense. <laughs> that ain't common, common sense. sense. I get what he's no. saying. But, but, but how? Sense. Yes. But how comfortable would y'all be if a woman did every single time she wanted you to do something, she told you how it's done? Like would y'all say most men would be like, okay, that's okay. So if listen. Okay. In the beginning, when you communicate with somebody and you start a relationship, or you're just getting to know a person. If you start telling me from the beginning, hey, man, this is the way I like things done, and you start showing me by example, hey, man, go in there and clean out the drawer, but this is why I need you to do it. I need you to separate the papers from yours, from mine, or whatever. Then I start knowing that this is the type of person that you are. When you ask me to do things, I know that this is what you want me to do. It's not mm. doing it the way I normally do it. I'm just going to grab everything, put it in the bag, be done. But if you start explaining to me, hey, man, break that down, this is the way I need it to be done. So I start remembering that, okay, well, she asked me to do things, this is what she, because she's very meticulous about the way things are done. 
So let me go ahead and do it this way. But if you don't show me that, just keep nagging at me like, oh, you didn't do it right. Come do it right. Hey, man, we just don't keep conflict. You know what I'm saying? So, but what about the my okay? Another example would be what if you know you are a woman and you telling your mate, okay, this is what I I like. Let's say mm-hmm. it's important. Let's say Valentine's Day comes around and he hasn't got you anything for Valentine's Day. You guys been dating for you know six months or a year or whatever, and but you tell him, okay, I like flowers. I like candy you know i'm not too good to receive a gift even if it's a card or you know something but yet you tell him you like all these things you would like him to do this and yet he still won't produce anything for valentine's day won't produce anything christmas or any other day but you stated this is what you like and so at that point she keeps having to tell him this is what I would like from you. This is what I want, and he's still not doing. Is he doing anything? Right. <laughs> is he doing anything? If he ain't doing that, no. I'm oh, sorry. Well, I mean, he might not be doing it what you want to do, but is he doing anything? Anything like what? Like, like what? Is- oh, oh, wait. All right. Good. Okay, so you say you don't like you tell you like the candy flowers, but he might not bring you candy flowers. But he might bring you a uh, a pair of shoes. A balloon. Okay, but why would you not? But why you not getting nothing? That's what I'm saying. You're not getting anything at all. But oh, happy, we, merry we, Christmas, we happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> a man. Hey, 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 April. That's a man to man situation. That's 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 a, a man to another way. <laughs> I can't vouch for him. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You can't put a man ain't doing something on. You can't vouch for somebody that ain't doing something on something as obvious as as Valentine's Day. Right. right. You yeah. No. Now, if he, do, you know, you you can't vouch for that person. If, if that person not doing for you on Valentine's Day, where you almost expect some, yeah, you need to right. reevaluate the guy that you're working with. Right. Yeah. right. All right. It All right. I'm on top of We all know it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Free game. So watch this here. Let Come me let me this. say this. Oh, I don't mean I don't. Let me let somebody else. But I got something to say too. Go ahead. It's on okay, your mind. So Go ahead. What happens when, okay, so you have a guy and he likes doing things. Um, he likes bringing you roses, bringing you teddy bears, and showing his affection the way he know how to do it, right? But then you don't tell him what else to do, but you say, I don't like teddy bears. I don't want no teddy bears. I don't want no roses. So then, but you ain't saying other things. Or you might say that you want something else, but it's out of the reach of what he's able to produce. Mm-hmm. So, kind of, to me, it's kind of stripping away, taking away for me to be romantic to you in my way. Yeah. You get, like, I know how to be, I like, I like to be romantic. And I like to give bears, I like to give roses, I like to buy perfume, I like to buy shoes. But then you say, I don't like none of that stuff. I don't want none of that stuff. Don't buy me no more bears. Don't buy, so now what? Oh, you want to bet? But then I got five hundred again. Yeah. So now, well, that's something between you and that woman that you guys have to decide. Yeah. Okay, what's that compromise in between? I see that you know you are trying, you are getting these things. So that's up to her to say, okay, well, I don't like this, but you know, maybe let's just go out to a movie but, or do dinner or spend some time. Maybe with maybe you don't have to do those. What, what, what happens when they constantly tell you, I want that bag. I want that bag. I want that bag. So you constantly <laughs> telling me. <laughs> <What? Hey. laughs> Reevaluation of that woman. Right. <laughs> that <part. laughs> it goes both you ways. It goes <laughs> both ways. Right. Yeah. Love languages are different. You know, some people got their love languages that are just totally different. This person might like like actual gifts. This person might like actual touch and feel and affection. But yeah. if th- this person level is way up here and my level is like way right here and we can't meet in that middle of compromise, yeah, that's where the, re- the reevaluation of that particular person yeah. comes into effect. Absolutely. I can't do it. You know, I can't. Right. Look, you met me not giving you no no red bottoms. You know, <laughs> hey, 
you got the little me. So that, that that goes back all the way back to the first question of communication and what do I have to give out to you? That probably be one of the things I give out to you. <laughs> you know, yeah. that probably be yeah. one of the first things I give out. Hey, I, hey, hey, listen. <laughs> you know, so you want to at least be that far out there. Yeah, I okay. agree. Okay, so any has anybody watched uh, Madam C J Walker? Who who's watched it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, y'all watched it. Okay, cool. So let's kind. I have a question about that. What do you think the mm, dynamics yeah, was true. between her and her husband? Me personally, I felt like watching it that she emasculated him. That was that's my opinion. So what's your opinion on the dynamics of her and her husband? I want to hear Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain why you said that, though. Okay, explain why I said that he yes. she emasculated him because I I felt like now don't get me wrong it was completely wrong for him to cheat on her, you know his dad tried to give him some advice and you know things like that that he didn't take but at the same time I felt like the communication could have been better between them two to where she could have included him more as her husband. It was pointed out in the movie how she would always say, my company, my company, but it was their company. You know, he helped her from the beginning, washing hair and doing little things to help her build this business, but she left him out. When she wanted to take her daughter to New York, he could have went with her and her daughter to New York. It wasn't a reason for him to stay and her just to bring her daughter. They all could have been together. I felt like that was a perfect opportunity for both of them to be a power couple. But because of her own personal drive, she disregarded this man who truly did love her for her, that he showed that in the beginning. And as a result of what he wasn't feeling from her and being able to communicate her with her and being shut down, he sought that in another woman that was able to give him the attention that she was giving. Not saying that it's right that he should have did it. I'm just saying that that was the dynamics that I felt like it could have been different had they had a conversation. Because he kept trying to tell her, you know, it's always yours. You know, and me. So with having a better conversation with each other, saying, hey, babe, you don't include me in this. This is this is ours. I help you build this. How can I help you so we can enhance this and we can grow and we can do this together? And her being willing to listen to that. OK, so this is this is how I see it. Um, Madam C.J. Walker had a heck of a drive. And a lot of the times in relationships, that drive is not met by the partner. So um, to be emasculated, that's based on a man's experience of how the woman makes him feel. Not necessarily that he is being emasculated, but he feels that way based on her drive for her gift and her establishment for growth. She had that drive and that drive could have been mistook as her being emasculated. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's all based on interpretation. Why it looked like she may be emasculating him, her drive is much more advanced than his is. And so it, it's more or less he has to catch up and have that same drive that she has in order to be, to be able to complement her drive. It didn't seem like he was able to complement the drive that she had. So, may, so it seems like she felt like she had to make more moves as it relates to her, uh, her company, if you will, because he wasn't acting on it. Now, on the same note, a man has to feel like a man. And a lot of that comes from how the woman makes him feel. And so she has to be empathetic enough to say, you know what? I may be doing this wrong. I may be doing that wrong. But I also need him to compliment me just like he wants me to compliment him. She she had a drive for her company to go this way. And so if he matches that drive, then maybe she would say our company. But if he does not have the capacity to match her drive, and that's what I saw. I saw a drive in her. I didn't see her being emasculated. It looked that way because he didn't he didn't compliment that drive. 
And so, I mean, I see both sides of it, but a woman that has has an extensive drive in that manner, she has to have a man to be able to compliment that. And it didn't seem like he did. He wasn't, and there was times when he wasn't moving fast enough. You know what I'm saying? There was, right. was times when he was compromising what other people were telling him and she wouldn't take no for an answer and he would take no for an answer. So he, so if he had that same kind of drive that he wouldn't take no for an answer, like, like Madam C.J. Walker was, then maybe she would, maybe she would relinquish some of that power to him as far as calling it our company, but she needs him to climb on board. And it didn't seem like he was all the way on board. It seemed like he wanted to control more than she did. And he got pissed off and upset that he didn't get the kind of control that he felt like he needed. And the influence of that time was that the man had to be in control. That's why those men were kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want to support this because the man ain't in it and all other stuff. But if he would have had that drive to match hers, then maybe it could have been that way. No. I can agree and disagree. I felt like I believe he had in the beginning part of the movie, he had came to her so many times getting instructions from her on what to do and being in places that she needed him to be like in the kitchen washing hair, mm -hmm. doing things that in that time of life, me and what supposed to be doing. Men were supposed to be doing in charge of the company, but he stood, he, to me, he stepped down and got into places where she needed him to be. But several times in the beginning part of the movie, she would still go in and say, my company, my this one. And that way to go on a person when when you when you feel like you, you're married to this person, you're dedicated to this person, you're willing to do whatever it takes to make this person win or succeed, you know, so you're willing to take these other roles. And then they still consider themselves on the front line by themselves. You feel what I'm saying? So I think to me, and then he told her in the movie, he, he said it, you know, because we'll speak out sometimes, hey, man, you're forgetting about me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He told yeah. you, you forgot who your husband is. You forgot. I understand we got to drive for the business, but at the same time, at the end of the business, where's the relationship at? You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Where's our marriage at? And so if you're forgetting about me in the business, you're damn sure going to forget about me in the marriage. You feel what I'm saying? And that's how, that's to me, that's how that went. And true enough, I agree. He did need to step up a little bit more and try to match her drive. But at the same time, when you got a person that's 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 trying to be there and 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 yeah. And 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 what are, the word I'm looking for is compromising who I am to make sure that you shine or make sure that you meet your goals or your dreams, then I think that you should pay attention to me a little bit more. You know what I'm Yeah, saying? I agree with that too. I mean I, I agree with everything. I, I agree with all of it. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to paint a better picture of Madam right. TJ's Walker's stance. Like right. I said, it could it could come off as emasculated in his experience could be that he is being emasculated. So mm -hmm. from that perspective, I think she should be empathetic enough to to see what his uh, what his what his gripe is. I think both of them have yeah. a legitimate gripe. I don't think there's any right or wrong in here. I think there's a level mm -hmm. of understanding that both of them had to come to and a compromise. Like you said, a compromise that they had to come to. I just don't think there's a right or wrong in it. I think just think there's a lack of communication and a lack of understanding on both on both sides of the spectrum. Yeah. And, and what's what not to put nobody out, but you can see how that feeling can take such control over man's Thought. Oh yeah! Because even his father told him, "Say, hey man, you finna mess up. You finna, you know." But still, that thought took control over his actions. You know what I'm saying? He still ended mm -hmm. up going out there messing up just because of that yeah. thought of being masculated. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. yeah. Okay. Anybody else? And Anybody not to excuse it. I mean, that's why he went to, that's why he started cheating, not to excuse right. it. But I think that's right. one of the reasons why he started cheating because that woman made him feel like the king that he thought he was while he was feeling right. emasculated by his wife. Of course, that's no excuse, but that, that that's right. the yeah. reason, I believe that's the reason why he, he cheated. Yeah. I don't think it was about the business at all. It no. was just more so uh, their relationship. Know, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else want to say anything? Adrian, Eli? I know about her story and her accomplishments and stuff, but I didn't see it. I, I didn't watch it. I seen it on Netflix, but I haven't watched it. Okay. I haven't watched it either. Okay. So my next question is, now why is it hard for men to tell women if they are not financially ready for a relationship. 
instead of getting in the relationship and ducking and dodging her or making broken promises. Why is it hard for men to what? Why is it hard for men to tell women if they not financially ready for a relationship? If you're not financially ready for a relationship, say you get in a relationship, you want to be with her, you try to do your best and you love her and things like that, but then you realize along the way you still have other obligations. Like you you may be taking care of your mom and dad, you helping you know your family members out or whatever. So in turn, that becomes a situation where you're neglecting your relationship with what y'all have because you're helping other people outside of the relationship. So in that point, you're not financially ready for your relationship with your partner. I don't think there's ever going to be a time where you can say you're financially ready to be at nothing. Hmm. There's always something that comes up. There's always something, whether it be bills, family member sickness, death, there's always something that comes up. So I don't, I don't know how to answer the question. But to me, even though when I felt like I was financially, financially ready to be in a relationship, I was. <laughs> it seemed like every day it's some, some family member needs some help or death just jumps up upon you. You know, I had two, three deaths in one month. You know what I mean? So it's like it's always something. My mother gets sick. I need to help her. Or my wife's mother gets sick. It's just always something. So financially, I guess, it's where you with a partner or, or where you're at. Like, I don't think there's ever going to be a time. I think you're rich and you can just afford it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe somebody else got a different opinion. Anybody? Yeah, um, I I believe that we as men were more emotional than women, mm -hmm. just for the simple fact that we're more guarded than y'all are of our hearts. Mm -hmm. And so when we drop our guards and exercise that level of vulnerability to be able to tell someone that we're not financially ready, we need to know that it's going to be safe enough for us to tell y'all that. And y'all have to be able to provide that safe haven for us to say something like that without judgment. Uh, the problem is, is that a lot of the times that judgment comes in such a harsh way because there's an expectation of a man supposed to be the provider, a man supposed to be financially uh, the care for the woman. And that's what society teaches us. That's what the church teaches us as well. But if you don't provide that safe haven, for us to be comfortable enough to be able to exploit ourselves like that in a vulnerable and emotional way, that can really be very detrimental and very, uh, very broken of a, of a man. It, it'll break a man down to be able to express his emotions like that, knowing that he's not in a safe place to be able to do it because of the judgment that comes from a woman. When we want to be vulnerable, vulnerable enough to tell you that you know what we we broke, I, I'm broke, I can't do this right now. You know what I'm saying? And, and and for a lot of for a lot of women, that's a turn off. You know what I'm saying? And so you you know you don't look at the potentiality of us, you don't look at the integrity that is involved in us telling y'all that, and then all of a sudden we get judged, we get ridiculed. We get ostracized and you talk to us in a belittling and condescending tone. That's going to make us shut down and it's going to make us be more guarded. And that's why I feel like we're more emotional than women, because we're more guarded. Women are better monitors of their emotion than men are. And when we let ourselves go like that and y'all say some condescending, belittling stuff to us and judge us in such a way that is so harsh that it makes us want to retreat. That's the reason why it's so hard for us. But all women and don't do that, Hilton. You can't put no, us all in that, in that I can't, same I can't, category. I, I never you said that. No I, woman, I, no, I never said that, but it only no takes woman. one woman. But it only takes one woman to do it. I'm not saying all y'all like that, but it only takes just like it takes one dude to mess over y'all and cheat on y'all to think that all dudes are dogs like most of y'all do. We are right. the same way. If you mess over our hearts in a certain kind of way, we're going to, we going to generalize y'all in a certain way. That's right. the society we live in. Speak for us, Hilton. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm More Any feedback? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So when a man, are we talking about a man uh, disclosing disclosing his uh, financial situation at the beginning of a relationship, or just like when they hit hard times? In, in, in general, the either at the beginning, if he's not financially ready, or oh, whenever. Well, as a woman, 
I will know that. Like he ain't gotta tell me. Cause I already <laughs> know what's going on. I'm serious. And I I'm I'm I am I have that church perspective and I'd be like, mm, I I know he's not gonna make me do this or i'll even ask questions and i'll be like okay what's, what's your vision like what what are you gonna do and if i don't like the answer i'm i'm done i'm gone like that's not for me not right now anyway so, yeah but he could but he could have a vision and still not have the finances to make it come to pass that, that's fine but i'm not that at that particular time for me i know what i what i need at the moment and if you're not what i what I see myself having, then that's just what it is. That's the decision that I would make. So I would want to have to put him in a position to feel bad about telling me blah, 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 with a long down the line. We, we didn't even start doing it. Okay, and that right there, and that right there is the reason why I feel like stuff should come out in the beginning. Right. So we won't waste nobody's time later on down the line uh, mm -hmm. trying to figure stuff out. I, that's why I think information should come out in the beginning. Absolutely. At this point, now I'm with you. Well, certain things, but <laughs> I already make that. That no. that be my uh, non-negotiable. My my <laughs> deal. Okay, right. okay. Okay. Well, then all your non should all, all your non-negotiables should come out in the beginning. All of your right. non yeah. maybe not everything, but every non-negotiable should come out in the beginning. Absolutely. I I I feel you on that. I feel you on that. No doubt. I agree. He doesn't have to be rich. Okay, let me let me say that because I'm not I'm not a gold digger or anything. It's just that I believe without finance, there is no romance to me. Without finance, there's no romance. So um I respect that. Much. I just no, think that's what I'm sorry. I, think, I respect that. I don't think you could tell no woman in the beginning that you broke. You can't do that. If you want her, you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you if she loved you before, then yeah, you can say, look, I'm doing bad. I need some help or whatever. If y'all got prior experience, cool. But if you just meet a woman and be like, shit, I'm broke. But that's it. <laughs> that's well, it. well, it ain't gonna come out just like so right. I wouldn't not like that. I mean, I was just not saying, like though, you know, just you know, in the beginning, in the beginning when we meet, nah. If she find if she figure out she ain't got no bread, man, that's that's over with. That's a non-negotiable in the beginning. I believe. <laughs> uh, these days, yeah, they want you to have something, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You gotta, have something. you gotta have something. You gotta have something, man. That's what's yeah. up. You gotta have something. Oh. Especially at our age, you gotta have something going. Yeah. But it's crazy though, because it's always to me, this it's always the man that's gotta have something. A woman ain't gotta have something. Is, bro. You're the provider. <laughs> just how it is, man. You know. You ain't the woman ain't gotta have nothing. She just come in and just act and do whatever she wants to do. Yes. Pretty much how it's set up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a woman should not wait till it gets down the line to say that a man got to have some finances. A woman should not wait to tell a no, man that. She definitely at all because some women do wait to say that. You know what I'm saying? And then well, the man wind up falling. The man really wind up weird. falling in love, and then all of a sudden she don't want to be with him no more because his finances ain't straight. Well, you know that's why I, that that's another reason why I think stuff should come out in the beginning. That's yeah. just, you just personal, that person. personal yeah. opinion. You gotta know. You gotta be a good judgment of uh, character in the beginning. Well, but if you in a situation and so many are that okay, it didn't come in, out in the beginning. Now you together. Now you three, four, five years in this thing. And you, know, five years, man, and you ain't no dude. Ain't had no money. Right? Five years. Oh, I'm saying. Oh yeah, you gonna know that the dude ain't got no money for five years. I mean, so I'm saying, uh, you know. Listen for me, y'all. I'm saying in the in the interim of it that you are four or five years in, and you see it's a lot of women out there that's in the situation that they're four or five years in the relationship and they're the main providers. They're you know they're, they're helping. well on the line. You let him do that. Yeah, you're right. So I'm just saying in in that instance. That's when the communication kick in of okay, well, so, somebody has to do something different, or you know, what's that going communication on. communication should have kicked in the first year. And a yeah. lot of times, we're gonna do whatever you let us do. <laughs> mm, you I'm right. glad y'all saying that. <laughs> oh, vice versa. You know, but that, but that goes both ways, though. Yeah, I was just that, but that goes both ways. They go both ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it goes both, both ways. ways with the woman. Like, everything we talking about go both ways. Yeah. yeah. 
Everything yeah. we talking about go both ways. Just like you don't want me broke. I don't want you broke either. Oh, well, exactly. <laughs> I had to say, I you need, you I need to a helpmate. <laughs> I, I had to make up my mind in life that anybody I was dealing with from here on out, they, I mean, of course, I'm going to be the one to take care of everything, but at the same time, I got to know for a fact that if I do break down, if I get hurt, something happened, I don't want us to be in no box just because, you know what I'm saying, I, I didn't got broke down or something happened. You got to have something too. You got to have an education, some type of income, some type of something to go along with your package. Because uh, I mean, and I hate to be as blunt as this, but you know the the the, the cooler box and 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 all that don't even matter at this point in life no more because it's free for everybody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the same way you look at us that we can't be broke, you can't be broke either. You got to have education the same way I gotta have one. You know what I'm saying? So we put two and two in the box together. But you know, like I wouldn't want to enter a relationship broke anyway. I'm a very prideful person, so who is that? Who is that talking? Twenties, twenties. Me either. I wouldn't enter no relationship broke. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. But you could form a bond or a friendship with that person, though. And, and maybe something can pop off later on down the line. You could form some type of bond with them. Couldn't you? Yeah, that's true. I mean, well, you could, but it depends. Like you say, you got to know where it's going. Okay. The You're in the friend zone now because you ain't got no money. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you're in the that's friend zone. True. What if you like her? So see, what you're going to do is, you know, yeah. that's where a game going to come in to play at yeah. because now you got to play a game because you ain't got no bread, but you like her. So you right. gotta go and try to bro. Let me borrow some money, bro. I gotta do that. I gotta do that. I gotta do that. That way that ambition come in. And so now you try and get her. You know what I'm saying? But you're not gonna never let her know that you ain't got no money. You can't let her know that. So let me ask you, let me ask y'all this. So when you get into a relationship and you got money, but then what happens with it, ladies? What happens if the man go broke? And you, you can't, can't no, that's I different. Say you can't, you can't let her know you look, you can't that's let her know. No, I'm just saying no money. you with the man. <laughs> that's what I'm saying is you with the man now, you three, four, five years in. Mm -hmm. Something happened where this man can't get no more. He can't get no money like that no more. So do you leave it? Do you do you what happens now? No, no, you, you work it out. Was, you, was based on the money. You, you have his back, then you work it out. You oh, work you it out. <laughs> I feel you, bro. I feel you, bro. No doubt. I feel that, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you gonna really see how real she is. Right. Yeah, we was based on the money in the beginning, though. Not based on the money. That sounds bad. Don't say based that's on it, but, but that's what that is, though. As bad as it sounds, that's what it is. That we, that we are on money, that's it? I don't it's, think that's, so. that's what it sounds like. It, it's, so it's very, very Propose that we man do. broke if he broke and, and Mercedes you out of there. If, 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 the, if he know. broke, you out of there. Exactly. He out of there. Right. Hey, I'm, I'm like you say this. I'm like you say this. If you ain't got nothing, then you out of there. You out of there. Exactly. Because honestly, I wouldn't ask a man to do something that I couldn't do myself. Also. Okay, so watch this. I'm not Mercedes. going to ask for some some super high expectation that I couldn't meet myself. Well, listen, so Mercedes, you yeah. don't know this. The man love you. He can like you, like you, like you. He broke, but you don't know this. He got a settlement coming next year for a million dollars. But you say today, man, he ain't got no money, bro. That's not very likely. That's not very likely. But he gonna disclose that at the beginning of the relationship because that's right. He don't want to get you. So yo, we gonna keep that one in the bag. But right now, I'm falling on hard times. But I really, really like you, man. And I think we can really feel something. So he on hard times when he meets me? Is that what you give him? That's the scenario. Well, I mean, yeah. you never no. know when you might meet a person. You could be, you could be a millionaire when you meet a person, or you could be the brokest, brokest nigga in the world when you meet a person. You never know what time God gonna let you meet somebody. Absolutely, and we'll be friends. There's no problem. <laughs> okay. We'll be friends. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, see, well, that's okay. my thing's perspective. Well, that's mine. <laughs> that's my perspective. I'm sorry. There ain't nothing wrong with that perspective. There's nothing right. wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with Mercedes' perspective. I, I'm, let's just no. say that right then and there. There's nothing wrong with it because yeah. it's, it's to each his own. Everybody has a certain need in their relationships, and that's one of her yeah. needs. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody has their own needs. If you can't meet their needs or their expectations, then you should be in a relationship with them. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with what, yeah. she's, with, what she yeah. wants in a relationship. Yeah. Okay, well, let me say this. I'm just trying to get an understanding to make a joke. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I got you, big dog. I got you. 
Let me say this, and we gonna we'll <laughs> we'll end it on this note. So I know you know most everybody watch Real Housewives of Atlanta. So you see the dynamics between um, Candy and Todd in their relationship. You know, initially how everybody, you know, well, the people outside, even her mom thought about him being an opportunist and all this stuff because he was doing camera production work behind the scenes. And we know, you know, Candy got money and everything like that. So I know recently he has stated in one of the recent episodes that he had to leave what he loved just to compete with her, not really so much to compete with her, but just to compliment her. He had to go, you know, create a business and start a trunk, truck company because his money level is equivalent. Now, he can't stand trucks. He don't like that, but that's something that he did because of the level of income that he can make from it. So it's like he felt like he had to, you know, change the person that he is and really not be happy because he had to be right there on the same level with her. How do you guys feel about that? Do you feel like he should have to compromise himself or just, you know, just feel like he can be in an orbit to be good enough to be with her? I feel like I feel like a man's supposed to do what it takes to take care of family. But I feel like if I have to sacrifice my happiness or who I am just to please your try to compete with your money then I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be no part of that. I wouldn't want to be in there. You know, because if you if you if, if everything is based on what you making and, and I have to try to then you sacrifice my happiness or who I am. I can't even be me no more because I gotta try to compete with your pocketbook. I ain't gonna yeah. do that. If I'm supplying, if I'm taking care of family, I'm taking care of home and I'm 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 being who I am, and I'm happy with this. Then that should be that should be enough. Okay. I do think Todd's sleeping on a lot of stuff that he do. You know what I'm saying? I think he doing all these things to try to compete. Then he 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 tripping. I wouldn't be doing it. You know what I'm saying? I would find me something that's gonna make me happy, and I would make that work. You know what I'm saying? I would try to get the best of my ability out of that. If I can't, then I would stop it. You know? Okay. True that. True that. And where's the compromise on her part at? Is there any compromise on her part, or is it just him doing all of the compromising? I, I don't it's, watch it that much. But it I seems like it's him doing all of the compromise because right. you it's know her. she's still taking acting jobs. She's still doing a lot of things, and he's like, "We need you here. You have kids. We need you here. You don't have to take that extra job. You don't have to do that speaking event." But she still says yes to all these goals and dreams that she has that she wants to do. Yeah. And she really kind of shit on him a little bit when he ain't doing what she does. Yeah. So I guess I said it that you can see the dynamics in how these oh, relationships sorry. play out. Y'all excuse my language if I'm cussing too much. No, you good. DC, any feedback? Well, I hadn't watched um, the show in a long time. So... Okay. I mean, what, what, what show was it? Just in general, like we're Housewives of Atlanta. Not necessarily just, I just use it as an example, just to show the dynamics of, you know, their relationship. But that's just. Now, the, I, now the last time I, I watched the show, I remember they were getting married, and I remember he was asked to sign a prenup. Now, I didn't see anything wrong with it. You know, you have all these famous NFL and NBA professional players. What is the first thing they scream? Prenup. So I didn't see anything wrong, anything wrong with her asking for, you know, the prenuptial agreement. When it, but and also you talked about his drive. Like you want somebody to match your drive. I, if I make more money, money than you, that's fine. But I have to kind of pick it up and try to match my drive. Doing something so not actually compromising. You know. Trying to invest in my dreams. I want you to invest in your own dreams. Yeah. Yeah. And that's true. And I think you mentioned that to him. Like, you didn't, you know, you don't have to do this. You could have started a production company or did something you know, that he enjoyed. He could have picked that and enhanced that. But he feels like that may not give him that level of money that he needs right now to be right up there and comfortable. 
But the reason he feeling that way is because everybody, her, her family, her mother, everybody making him feel bad about everything that he does. And oh, I, you ain't making no money. You ain't doing this. You ain't doing. So of course he's stepping out of side the box to try to you know mm-hmm. compete and, and and make everybody happy with his part. But still, you know, at the end of the day, it's not going to be enough. Yeah. Yeah. And that's going to kill him. It's going to stress him out to the point where it might he might end up in somebody's hospital. Because the stress that comes from trying to live up to other people's expectations is disastrous. And, and, and it can lead to medical conditions, too. Because, you know, stress, it weakens the immune system. I mean, it could cause heart attack, stroke, diabetes, and all that other stuff. I mean, if he keep working at that kind of pace, trying to live up to everybody's expectation, it's going to kill him. That's why, that's why I agree. That you know, I I wouldn't be trying to do all that for no doubt, no trying to live up to somebody's expectation of money and stressing myself out for it if there's no compromise on the other part of it either. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, anybody want to say anything else? Any other questions? Anything? <clears throat> Nothing. Nobody has any feedback. I got some feedback. I got these quarantine shirts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they are available. <laughs> but yeah, if y'all ever need print work, hit me up. I do t-shirts. I do garments. Well, drop your information. What what is it? How can they uh hit you up to find it? Get that t-shirt. Uh, there's an the the option in the chat. Huh? In the chat, you might can like post the link or yeah, is that an option in here? Well, yeah, right in the huh? chat. I believe it is. Hold on. Yeah. Well, go and ahead and also, tell us, um, hey, let yeah. us know. Because I don't think the people are going to be able to see the chat, but they can hear what you say. So go ahead and let us know. Okay. So we- um, if you go on Facebook, my, my name on Facebook is The Print Plug, D-A-P-R-I-N-T, Plug. And you can get the shirts on there. You can inbox me. Or, and I have a website called Focus Athletics Clothing. I wish I could drop a link on it, but it's on my um, it's on my Facebook page, The Print Club. Okay. The Print Club and Focus Athletics Clothing. Right. Okay. And then you probably yeah. can um he, he yeah. can reply all to that email that you sent out the invite on. Okay. All righty guys, this is it. So thank you guys for joining in thanks for the invite we appreciate it so this concludes our conversation so until next time be blessed be safe and be happy